Hello and welcome back to Kindle Love Stories for people who want to hear about love and romance and happy endings. I'm your host, Laura Rope. Now this week is Cowboys Week at Kindle Love Stories, and we're going to talk to two authors who write beautiful Western romances, Deborah Holland and Caroline Fife. With me on the line right now, I've got two authors, Deborah Holland, the author of the Montana Sky series. The first book in that series is Wild Montana Sky, and the second book, Starry Montana Sky, was selected by Amazon in February as one of the top 50 greatest love stories. Deborah's novel, Wild Montana Sky, received RWA's Golden Heart Award. Hello, Deborah. Hello. And we've also got Caroline Fife on the line. Caroline is the author of the Prairie Hearts novel series, Where the Wind Blows, and the brand new Before the Larkspur Blooms. Hi, Caroline. Hi there. And your book, Where the Wind Blows, was winner of RWA's Golden Heart Award. Congratulations on that, Caroline. Thank you so much. So, ladies, welcome. It's wonderful to have you on the program today. Oh, we're delighted delighted to be here here with you, Laura. (laughs) Now, it's true that the two of you are great friends, correct? Absolutely. Tell us about your friendship. Everyone loves to have a good girlfriend. I think it started <laughs> with, with me reading Caroline's books, and I was caught by her title that was Montana Dawn, and here I have Montana Sky Books. So I read her books, and then I went and looked at her, her website, and here she is. She's blonde and blue eye like me, and I just had this feeling of affinity for her. So I wrote her, and I said, hey, we have these books in common, and, you know, we look like we sort of would mesh and we started writing and we both write what's called sweet westerns as opposed to sexy ones or or gritty ones uh, for mine I, I describe them as little house on the prairie type type of books caroline's are a little bit more she has a rattlesnake and <laughs> right now <laughs> I'm a little bit more killed now and then <laughs> i'm a little grittier yeah yes, she is. so yeah i've seen those words bounced around about your books sweet and clean and passionate and sentimental and lovely are words I hear a lot about your writing. So let's talk about your writing. You both write about Western historical romances. What makes a historical cowboy such a compelling hero for the two of you? Maybe Deborah, you can start? Well, mine actually goes back to a true story that actually happened to me and in 1998, it was New Year's, and I was out cowboy dancing at the Cowboy Boogie, and I live in Orange County, so we don't have cowboys. <laughs> but I happened to meet one that night who was in town for the season of the racetrack. So we started dating, and he was young and cute and sexy, and we had a lot of fun together, and we had nothing in common. <laughs> and I thought, gee, if we lived in the West a hundred years ago, who he is and who I am just might have worked. And that's how I got the idea for the story. It was based on my young cowboy. And, and Nick, my hero in Wild Montana Sky, is physically resembles my cowboy. And the young man changed my life. Well, I'm sure all your <laughs> readers are glad you met that that nice cowboy that day. <laughs> and it amazes me. Oh, my that that's how your mind works, that you already placed your romance, your would-be romance, into this literary world. That's what a true writer can do. Well, actually, I I was not writing at the time. I was not writing romance, although I'm a huge romance reader. Uh, I was writing stories of my, of my grandmother. They were true stories, and she was very adventurous as a child, and I was writing that. And, and so it was a leap. It was a total leap, and... It was one of those ser- serendipity or, or God things. And from there, my whole life changed, and I started writing the story, and look where I am now. Mm-hmm. What about you, Caroline? What is it about cowboys that... Yes. Well, I guess mine, mine goes back to what I see in the Western, the, the old 1800s cowboy, as compared to the... Um, contemporary is the sweetness and the kindness and how honorable they are. And mine kind of really trying to search my, my thoughts on how I got going on this. Back being the youngest of five girls, um, I was always toddling after my horse-crazy sisters, and I was just as horse-crazy, but I didn't get to 
take the lessons when they did because they were older and I had to watch with my mother and, and that kind of thing. But my father always sang these songs uh, with his ukulele and guitar of Marty, Marty Robbins. I don't know if you're familiar with those, but, you know, the streets of Laredo, El Paso, you know, Rose's Cantina, and the, my most favorite, and I'd say, Daddy, sing uh, the one again where the cowboy dies in the fall, you know, when the work's all done this fall, the, the young cowboy doesn't get to go home to his mother because he was trampled in a stampede. And that kind of kind of stuck with me all through my um, high school years and um, uh, goes right back to, you know, those were really romance stories, although those don't, didn't have a happy ever after if you got stampled or you got shot and killed. But <laughs> Um, it kind of uh, goes to um, follows with that, and one of my favorite shows was the Jim Bowie show. It was a black and white western in the 1950s. I was just a little kid, and I basically got the name Bowie. And finally, when I was starting high school, I said to my family, "Stop calling me Bowie. I mean, I'm going into high school. My name is Caroline. I mean, I was Bowie all of my growing up years because of Jim Bowie television show. I thought I should walk around with a Bowie knife and." And so I was the ultimate Tom boy and um, just fantasized about the Rifleman and all those uh, historically sweet, kind, honorable cowboys that you saw on TV. And I think that's just when I, you know, was reading and I was a young mother, I took the leave. Well, I want to write my own sweet, honorable, loving cowboy. And that's where Chase Logan in Where the Wind Blows came about. That was my very first novel and that's the one that won the golden heart and it just kind of and his story continues in Before the Larkspur Blooms and they actually tried to take over the novel from the new hero and heroine but they have a big part so people who are fans of the Logans will find a lot of them in the second book. What do you think is funny? Go ahead. I was going to just make a comment on what Caroline said. I imagine the girl walking around with a bow and bowie knife, and you would never if you look at Caroline. You would never know she's this beautiful, petite, blonde haired, blue eyed woman, and the last person you would think that would be the Tom boy with the knife. Oh boy! What did you? <laughs> what did you do with that knife? Why were you walking around with a knife? No, I'm sorry. I wanted to be. I wanted to. I didn't have the knife, but Jim Bowie was named. The television television show was named Jim Bowie because. He always carried a Bowie knife, Got you know, it. that one with a big skinny knife. And so that's how my nickname Bowie came about. I thought I, I pretended to be Jim Bowie on the television show until my family started calling me Bowie. But instead of B-O-W-I-E, it was B-O-O-I-E. That's so <laughs> And my brother-in-law, he always calls me Boo. Hey, Boo, how's it going? I'm like, oh, my gosh, Hank, I'm such and such years old. I'm still Bowie. <laughs> That's so cute. I'm really big on nicknames. If you and I were friends, you would be buoy to me forevermore just now. You would be really okay. annoyed with me. <laughs> That's fact, fine. I'll expect you to call me that. I uh, will respond. <laughs> good. Good. And I'm going to remember it, too. <laughs> okay. And now okay, a lot well, of people you're are. Good. It never sticks things in her books, and when I'm reading it, I crack up because it's kind of little jokes between us. <laughs> <sighs> That's great. And the characters are probably alive for both of you, too, right? I mean, these characters live on outside of your books for you? Oh, yeah. Totally I mean, they're not real. That. They're not real. I think yeah. they're real someplace, <laughs> and we just borrow them. Mm-hmm. You're right. What is the allure? Let's talk about the allure of the cowboy. You know, as set apart from there's all the other types of heroes we have in romance world, what is it about cowboys that's so alluring and the setting of where the cowboy can be found? Well, I think part of it for most, at least most American writers or readers, is that this is our history. You know, the West, you know, as the westward expansion happened, you know, through several centuries of moving West and people having to make do and live sort of the hard scrabble life to find their own land and to live their own kind of lives. And the men, at least the heroic men, that grew out of that, the strong, silent cowboy who's out there with the horses and who's honorable and respectful and, yeah, very, very masculine and very heroic. Mm -hmm. And anybody who loves their horse that much can't be bad at all. <laughs> it takes good care of his horse. True. 
No, you know what? You've got something there. There's something to that. A man who treats a Absolutely. horse with with tenderness and respect. Well, what's he going to yes. do with you know with a woman or a child, right? Absolutely, mm-hmm. and you know, my one of my characters actually, well, actually two of them. They they really can tell the character of the man they're dealing with is how he takes care of his horse. If it's a lame horse or if it's underfed horse, you know that's a, a bad desperado. You don't want to deal with him because he's he doesn't have anything but you know sourness in his heart if he can't take care of his horse correctly. Oh, I love it, and I think, and I think too that's because I have the more quiet, more shy kind of hero in my first book. And I think we start to see his strengths when we see him working with a horse that's wild and has been mistreated and is very dangerous, and yet he's working with this horse and, and gentling this horse. And so we can see his, his strength, and we see a lot about him just from him working with the horse. Uh-huh. Mm. Uh-huh. So also you're kind of alluding to the strong, silent type, right? This is another mm-hmm. an archetype that is very compelling, at least to me it is. The idea that someone has a lot more brewing underneath that he doesn't reveal. And it's only to those that he lets in who really get to see that softer core. Do you agree exactly. with that? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Totally. Mm-hmm. That's, that's right on the head. That it hits it. Exactly. They <laughs> let in who they can trust, you know, into their hearts. And who they love. Mm-hmm. And they, they love, love that's when they open up. Yeah, you know, which is every every woman's fantasy to be able to be very special to a man who he'll trust her and open up and be different with her than he is with the rest of the world. That's right. A... Exactly. <sighs> okay. Well, thank you very much, ladies. It was a real pleasure talking to you. And um that was Deborah Holland, the author of the Montana Sky series. Wild Montana Sky and Starry Montana Sky and others. And, of course, Caroline Fife, the author of the Prairie Hearts novels, Where the Wind Blows, and the brand new Before the Larkspur Blooms. Ladies, it was quite a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you for joining us. Thank, Thank you so fun. much, Laura. It was so much fun. <laughs> Thank you. And I loved, the, care. I loved the chemistry between the two of you. So keep writing. Oh, thank you. You guys are sweet. <laughs> we do, too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Bye, ladies.